Frank Kilroy is the launcher of the lifeboat. He's also the official librarian who helped to set up the museum in the old lifeboat house. Our boat is moored afloat in the river, and uh, this entails taking a Land Rover and a boarding boat, a large rubber boat, to put the crew aboard. We also have an inshore lifeboat here, a D-class rubber inflatable, which is used for shallow water rescues. It's a low sandy shore. People think because it's sand, it's safe. Sand can be just as hard as rock. And um, landmarks are few on the shore. The shore is very low lying. If the weather is murky, they get lost. We also get a lot of holidaymakers in summer who think it's a nice sunny day, the sea is calm, let's get our little rubber boat out and we boat at Woolworths and away we go. And of course they do go, literally, they get swept out to sea and it can be hours before anybody realises that these people are missing. This building used to house the lifeboat until 1961. We did an appeal through the local press two years ago and an amazing amount of artefacts came to light. Some have been held in families for years. There's an original oar off the last pulling lifeboat housed in this building that was found by one of our crew propping a chicken shed up in St Anne's. Items like machetes that form part of the cargo of the Mexico, people had them in their houses without realising the significance. The original type of lifeboat was what was known as a pulling and sailing self-writing lifeboat. In other words, a large open boat, which at least ten men sat and rowed. Boats themselves were taken to the launching spot on carriages, uh, pulled by horses, and the launching procedure itself took up to 24 helpers on shore, many of them wives, girlfriends, women of the town as well. And uh, the lifeboat was propelled then down the carriage into the sea. Quite often with launches, even launches and horses were drowned in the process of launching because uh, most lifeboats go to sea in very bad conditions. And shallow waters like this, you get large breaking waves on the shore. The hymn I've chosen is obviously Eternal Father Strong to Save. It expresses the uh, feelings of lifeboat men uh, for the concern and rescue and safety of those at sea. At one time, there were three lifeboat stations here, one at Lytham, one here at St Anne's, and another to the south of the river, across at Southport. A hundred years ago, all three crews were called out because the German bark, Mexico, was in great difficulty, just off the shore. 
at Southport. On that wild December night, the Laura Janet from St Anne's overturned and all hands died. Seven of them were Lytham men and they were buried together in St Cuthbert's churchyard. The Eliza Fernley from Southport reached Mexico but overturned and failed to right herself. It fell to the Charles Biggs from Lytham to rescue the 12 crewmen from the Mexico and bring them ashore. This memorial, this lifeboatman dressed in his oilskins and his cork life jacket, looks out across the water where so many have died. But this is not the only way in which those very brave men are remembered. Through press reports of the tragedy, great public interest was aroused and eventually fundraising fervour spread to Manchester where the first Lifeboat Saturday was organised in 1891. From that time, the gifts of the public have continued to support the work of the Lifeboat Service and of the volunteers who risk their lives in the service of others as they go out on seas which are frequently tempestuous. Our next hymn is a prayer for guidance through life's difficulties. Lead us, Heavenly Father, lead us all the world's tempestuous seas. Not works for Ernie. Lytham St Anne's is the headquarters of the Premium Bonds organisation. There are over a thousand people that work here. There is Ernie, um, national income bonds and so on and so forth. Do you have any doubts whatsoever about the Christian versus the gambling aspect? That is a, a question that comes up a lot and uh, when I became a Christian, I came to work here knowing that the Lord led me into this uh, uh, department. And uh, at first I had no qualms about it because I knew the Lord's leading. Uh, but then suddenly people kept asking me and uh, I then started to get a sort of a conscience. I thought, well, should I be here or not? And then I just started to pray. I am here to work. Uh, it's employment and my Christian work is just as important. Do you think, then, that you have something of a ministry here? Oh, most definitely. I think every Christian, no matter who they are, has a ministry uh, which, uh, in society uh, to witness for Jesus. To be, their life is to be a witness. Uh, they have to do everything as unto the Lord, uh, secular work and their Christian work. And sure. uh, we also have a Christian union on the side, uh, which I'm very much involved with. We have uh, Catholics, Methodists, Baptists, uh, Anglican, uh, Pentecostal. We're a mixed denomination and we just come together uh, once a week, generally, and we read the Word of God, discuss it between us. We just generally have fellowship. Now let's come to your hymn choice. Well, my favourite hymn is All Hail uh, the Power of Jesus' Name. And uh, every verse finishes with crown him, Lord of all. 
And that is the most important aspect of the Christian walk, is that we do crown him Lord of all.